I'm so glad you're here because we are going to explore three doorways that are very powerful doorways to both healing and awakening. A common complaint I hear from my clients is this, I've tried everything and nothing is working. Does that sound like something you've thought or said out loud? What it really means is I've tried all kinds of things, but I haven't found what is going to work for me. And here's what I discovered in my own journey. If I was trying things out in order to fix myself, nothing was going to work. Absolutely nothing worked when I was busy trying to fix myself in my self-healing journey. And the reason is that when you're focused on fixing, you're also putting a lot of attention into what's wrong with you, which makes you feel frustrated and angry. And then when things aren't working, you blame yourself or you blame others or you blame the approach that you used as not being good enough. You tend to be more depressed and often you throw everything out as not working including the things that were working for you. You want to feel good about yourself, right? So what's the missing ingredient? If I'm not fixing myself, what am I doing? What I discovered is that it worked a whole lot better for me if I paid attention to what the underlying beliefs were. Rather than trying to mm, make me better than I was, it was a lot kinder and a lot more compassionate to say, how did I set this up to begin with? Or what life circumstances set this up? What beliefs went into motion because of a trauma that I experienced or from past lives or a genetic heritage, something I inherited or outside influences that I didn't have control over what happened inside of me that allowed me to have a belief and mindset and heart set that allowed that those influences to start shaping my experiences ongoingly physically and or emotionally or both how do you get to those beliefs i discovered there are three doorways and they are sacred feminine doorways why sacred feminine? Because you discover them in the stillness. You discover them in an act of presence. And that doesn't mean meditation necessarily, but an act of presence where you are present to what is going on. So it's a, a form of divine communication that's happening inside you. And as you tap into these doorways, you get the intuitive guidance that you need to make the changes you need to get the results that you want. So the first doorway is emotions. Many of us have been taught that our emotions are something dangerous. You have to be careful of them or you have to get control of them. Don't let them rule your life, right? We've been taught to suppress them, keep them down, keep them buried. The problem with that is that a an emotion, a raw emotion, is a signal from your soul saying this does work for me if it's a pleasant emotion or this doesn't work for me if it's a sorrowful or angry emotion. And there are certainly places in between where you're having a mixture of feelings. That mixture of feelings is telling a story about the depth of your experience, elements of it being very appropriate, elements of it perhaps requiring a change in your story or in your environment. Now, women particularly go through some pretty significant experiences with emotions through the cycles of our life. Think about when you started menses, perhaps you've gotten pregnant and the emotions that came up with the hormonal changes, or you're going through menopause or have gone through menopause. These are powerful times in a woman's life when her emotions are very present and ignoring them doesn't work. If you tried it, you already know that. Ignoring them does not work. What we need to develop is a way to be present to the emotions so that we can get the messages and the stories and the divine input that is behind them so that we can then adapt or make changes in our lives that support us 
in experiencing what we want to experience, that happiness, that sense of connection with the divine, that bliss, that joy, whatever emotional quality we want to experience more of. That's the first doorway, your emotions. The second doorway is through your spiritual gifts. Now, this is an area when I'm doing coaching and counseling, I discover many individuals come from spiritual traditions where they've been told accessing their spiritual gifts is tantamount to accessing the devil or um, Satan's influence or um, sources you can't trust. Therefore, it's best not to connect with those gifts at all. The problem with that is that those spiritual gifts are actually another way that the divine is communicating with you. And I've discovered that most people have those mystical experiences through their spiritual gifts, whether they've been told they should or shouldn't. They happen spontaneously and naturally. For example, if grandma comes back to visit you from the other side of the veil, that's a lovely connection that can be empowering to you. If you have a premonition that it's not a good idea for your partner to get on that plane and you communicate it, you may have just saved your partner's life. If you're counseling with someone or you're doing your work in the world and you get this sense that they could use a, a little bit of insight into themselves and you share what you see, oh, but you're so good at doing this. You may have just empowered someone to step into their true life purpose. So these spiritual gifts are the ways in which the divine is communicating with us. It's also the way through which we convey those beautiful divine messages to others that we love and are in service to. Suppressing them can actually create a backlog of energy in your body that leads to greater illness and greater depression. It isn't that we need to close ourselves off from them as a form of protection. We need to understand them and know how to work with them to, yes, of course, protect ourselves, but also to be in dynamic service in the world. The third doorway is through your dreams. Now, dreams are something we often reserve for, well, if I have time, I'll get to that. Or, okay, that's really nice that I'm having these symbolic dreams, but they're not really all that important. I need to do things in my life. That's what my life is about. Well, when we close off our connection to the dream time, it's another way that we're connect, disconnecting, excuse me, from those beautiful insights from the divine. They're coming through metaphoric or symbolic dreams. Sometimes we're actually meeting with angels or archangels on the other side, or our loved ones on the other side of the veil, or power animals. These are animals we have deep affinity for, and they're showing us qualities in our life that we need to bring forward. We're actually seeing through our dreams where we might be stuck and what we need to do to become unstuck or in a greater flow in our lives. For some people, dreams are the single most powerful connection they have to the divine. And so it's important for us to develop a relationship with the dreams so that we're getting all that juicy divine guidance that helps us make good, clear choices for ourselves in our awakening and in our service. Of those three doorways, emotions, spiritual gifts, and dreams, most of us get started with emotions. Why? Because uncomfortable emotions dominate. They absolutely get our attention. We know something's not working, something's not right, we feel bad, and that gives us the motivation that we need to start attending to our emotional body. The most powerful tool I have for helping you connect with your emotions in a safe way and allow them, and it really is a state of allowing those difficult emotions to transition to more pleasing emotions, is with the Holding Guided Meditation. And it's available for you for free at my nonprofit website, sacredfeminineawakening.com. And that's right, it's the most powerful tool I have ever been given, and I give it away to you for free.
Now, if you already have the holding meditation, you may be finding that you need to go deeper. And if that's true for you, then check out the resources at sacredfeminineawakening.com where we teach you how to use the holding meditation to take you into more and more profound states of consciousness and awakening and healing. You can also visit misahopkins.com for resources that take you deeper into healing through sacred feminine modalities. That's misahopkins.com. All of these tools are designed to walk you through these three doorways of consciousness that take you deeper into healing and awakening. Your emotions, your spiritual gifts, and your dreams. All right, here's my question for you. What do you want more than anything? You want it so much, this quality of life, you want it so much, you'd be willing to walk through one of those three doorways in order to experience. Write your comment down in the comment section below. What do you want more than anything else? It's compelling to you, it's significant to you, you're willing to walk through one of those three doorways to get it. Thanks for being here with me today to explore these three powerful doorways to healing and awakening. And I look forward to seeing you in the next session. Be sure to subscribe so that we can stay in touch with each other. Music